Let's move now on to waves per se. Now, you know that from last year you've got the two kinds of waves. You've got the um, transverse wave, okay, which would be the quintessential skipping rope going up and down like that. And it makes the, basically what looks like a sine curve, doesn't it, in the air. But it could also be on this plane here, couldn't it? So we could have a wave traveling this way, or if we were shaking the rope this way, the wave would be going that way. You've also noticed that as you take your rope, the faster you do this, the more pulses you get, right? That's the frequency, isn't it? Okay, frequencies 1 over t. Just recapping from last year. Now, you've also got the longitudinal wave, which was everybody's favorite toy, including mine, the good old slinky, slinky spring where you compress it and it runs up the spring and backwards and forwards, right? And obviously, once again, the more you push, the more wave fronts go through there, okay? Now we need to have a look and just refresh very quickly on the process of what happens when two waves come together if they are traveling in the same or opposite directions, right? You must have stood on the beach, right? In the water at some stage, the waves there, and they're coming in and each wave is pretty much the same until all of a sudden there's suddenly a big wave stands up in front of you and hits you right what has happened there well first of all the normal waves that were coming in well let's say they looked like that in the sea right they went they were doing their normal sort of wave front wave motion things and all of a sudden, from behind, or from the side, another wave came in and caught up with it. So what did we get? The principle of superposition of waves? The one wave built on top of the other one, didn't it? Right? So if we look at it diagrammatically, right, what did we have? We had this. Okay. I'll tell you what, let's change it to blue because we're talking about waves. We had this situation here. Right? There's our waves coming along and all of a sudden another wave came and caught up with it and let us say for example that this wave um, had was there say right it's caught up with this wave what happens these two the amplitudes get added and suddenly that wave is up there okay you've heard of of, of freak waves um, and things like that's what's happening it's where suddenly a wave comes in from behind and catches up with another wave and then the result is a wave with a much higher amplitude much higher height okay height as in measured from the zero position okay now that's the superposition and we all all fail with what happens there let's go to the next part of this and say okay you must have stood at, a, at, at the end of a breakwater or a pier or a jetty at some stage. On a nice day, you see the waves sort of traveling in like a train of waves. In fact, it's called a wave train. So what do we see? We, standing, we are standing at the edge of a pier, let us say. There's our pier. And these are the waves. And we see these little white frothy caps going past us, don't we? Let's just say we... What did we do? We said, right, that is the crest, that is the trough, crest, trough, trough being the bottom, crest to the top. And we draw a line along the top to represent diagrammatically the peak of the wave, the crest of the wave, right? And the trough is the corresponding dip. So we've got crest, trough, crest, and we know the distance between the crest and the crest, or a trough and a trough, is going to be the wavelength isn't it okay similarly there to there is also one wavelength it's the length or the distance from the same place on the wave why because this place is going down we have to go to a going down point right so when we look at this we see these waves going past now how do we how do we deal with a um 
where we see the waves going past, right? Have you noticed that as they go past, oops, as they go past over here, let's say that's our jetty, these waves go past over here, right? What happens here on the side? If you look down here, you'll see, uh-oh, a wave goes this way now, right? So when this one went past, its wave is going that way. Right? What is happening is that because we've got this obstruction in the way, this wave is going past here, right? As it exits at that point, let's get back to my thing, let's pretend this is our breakwater, the wave is coming along here like that, right? So what have we got on the side? We've got our wave like this, haven't we? Now let's pretend and just take the wave all the way, right? So now there's our wave, okay? Pretty bad wave, but let's call it. There's our wave. Now, the water on this side of the box has got no wave in it. But the wave can't stand up like that. So what actually happens is it creates a wave to the side. If you like, it's kind of like the, the, the height of this wave must tie in with the surface here. So it loses energy to the side because you can't have a step in the water. Right? So it loses energy to the side. Now, as it loses energy, obviously, it gets flatter, doesn't it? Right? Think about it. You get hit by a wave that high, you go, oh, okay. Hit by a wave double that height, you go probably head first down to the bottom, or you at least get spewed up on the beach somewhere. The energy contained is much higher, right? So we are losing energy therefore we start dropping away to the side now we could do the same thing we could say right let us take a um, let us take something like this then shall we right now our wave comes in like this right what happens just as the wave gets here right it starts to come through but now this height is higher than the water there isn't it so it starts to lose energy on both sides. So the wave changes shape to this. Right? This is diffraction. Okay? It's diffracted on the edges by the opening. Because if you think all we've got is we've got this chunk of water there, it's blocked. That's all the water that can go through, isn't it? So it comes through with its wave. And then when it gets to the other side, it's still water. So all the pieces have to join up. And eventually, this wave over here, as it moves through like that, it loses its energy. Because all of that energy that was in there now has to spread out. It's like a huge lump of butter that now has to be spread on a big piece of toast. Right? So that wave's energy has got to be spread throughout everything. That is the concept and the process of diffraction. Right? What are we doing? We are watching these waves, physical waves in the sea, come through here and be diffracted by an opening. So the key of this is this opening concept, isn't it? Right? So as we move forward, we say, all right, we can now, what can we do? Right? Let's just leave the, um, the size of the waves and whatever um, as they should be. Okay, let's not play with that. But let's say, for example, we can change the width of the opening, can't we? So if we change the width of the opening, okay, we can make it large, right? Which means that we get that, right? Bent that way, that way, but most of it's coming through. But we could also change it down to be small, like that. And we can make it so that the wave goes like that, can't we? Okay? This is the case where it's got the maximum refraction. When we've got it down at that point. So we can keep going, but we can't do it, obviously, we can't do it where we get it to do something like this. Okay? Because it can't curl in on itself self like that. Right? It can't come backwards, in essence. Okay. Which makes logical sense because you've never seen anything like that do it. And, and let's be honest, the physics that we're discussing 
is the physics that happens in the normal world around us that we actually see. Because what are we tr we're trying to explain it. That's the whole reason for doing this subject, is to try and understand and explain everyday things in life. Microwave ovens, how do they work? Why do they work? How does a radar work? How does sonar work? Um, how do we uh, do spear fishing from the, from the top? You know, the Snell's law. All of those things are what we want to try and explain. This is merely just one of them. Okay? So, if we think about it from that point of view, we've got this element coming down here. And if you go through your textbooks and things, you will see some lovely, um, some lovely um, arrangements. I've got a few textbooks here that I've been looking at. You'll see some really nice uh, pictures of this and so forth as they go through different, um, uh, different obstacles and things like that. Right? Just, yeah, there's some great pictures of it, right? So, what we're saying here now is that this diffraction process, the, the, the concept of diffraction, right, is that we see the physical waves diffracting around like that. Okay? Now, what we want to do is we now want to say, okay, let us look at our waves, okay, and let us change them to two coherent point sources. Let's put two, pretend we're dropping a pebble in the sand, okay? As we drop the pebble in the sand, oh, into the water, my, my apologies, as we drop it in, we create a bunch of ripples going out, don't we? If you toss it into the middle of it, you know those postcard lakes you see, you know, with the mountains behind? Imagine dropping a, a, a marble or something into the middle of that, and you see this beautiful pattern as the ripple spreads out across the water. Obviously, the further away from the, from the disturbance, the less the, 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 the wave, the, or the less the energy is going to be of the wave. That, by the way, is also linked to Newton's universal law of gravitation. Remember that? The force is inversely proportional to 1 over r squared. The same thing is happening with that. But you can see these ripples moving away one by one. Now, let's look at the, um, the source next door. And let's put in there a, um, a uh, green wave, right? This one, as long as it is in synchronization, synchronized. In other words, if they are all basically hitting the water together to create ripples, it's going to create exactly the same ripples, isn't it? Okay? As we move out like that. Right? So you can see that those are what are called two coherent sources. They are both hitting the water, creating, let me say, the same size of ripple and the same wavelength. Let's just say it's an identical one. It's synchronized coherent sources, right? Well, what is happening is that I've now got two um, little wave sections being, being created in this pond, haven't we? What is going to happen here is that at some point, let's say I've got, um, I do the splash, let me just change this back to, right? I do the splash over here and the splash here. This ripple goes and it goes. Eventually, these two ripples here meet up, right? And we know that when waves meet up with each other, something's going to happen, isn't it? They're either going to add to each other, we're going to get constructive interference, or they're going to take away from each other and we get destructive interference, okay? Just to recap, let's just make sure we've, we've got those concepts. Um, the issue would be if we're going to uh, have two waves, like we said at the, uh, the beach, if a wave comes along and it's there and this wave is going that way and this wave is coming this way, these two waves when they get to each other are going to add to each other, aren't we? So we're going to have a wave which is going to be, if this is uh, got a, there one meter and let's say this one is two meters, this is going to be three when they pass each other. Conversely, if we had the wave coming at us this way, 
all right down here and if this was two meters down then the corresponding wave would be zero if this was only one meter down the corresponding wave would be one they would subtract from each other wouldn't they why well once again we just have to think about this logically don't we what do we do we say well hang on imagine this imagine a body of water I don't really want it in red so I'm just going to change it and put it back put it back to um, come on. okay there we go so we've got a body of water right that's that's a pond or whatever we want now what do we do we say right here comes a wave in here like so right. and it goes along there let us pretend that we've got in here we've got a a boy on a spring and they are linked all these boys are linked to the ground right now as this wave passes where does this boy go it goes to the top of the wave doesn't it that one goes to the top of the wave these two are in equilibrium they're not moving up or down at this point then let us say we bring another wave in right we bring the uh, the red wave in and let us say it's exactly the opposite wave all right now if it was just this wave where would that boy go it would go down wouldn't it to the trough but currently it can't be up and down at the same time so what does the thing do it just sits there because that shows that they've cancelled each other out right pretty much obvious but just so that we've got it that's kind of thing to visualize that's what's happening out there all right now we need to take this process of of um, of superposition and the interference between the two we need to take it a slight step forward because what we need to examine is we need to examine what happens when these waves interfere with each other what does it leave us with at the end of the day and of what benefit is this to us where, where are we going with it okay what would you use it for and what does it prove if anything well it actually proves something quite interesting it proves first of all that, that that light has got a wave nature and will meet up with light having a particle nature uh, as well with the whole photoelectric effect so we're now going to look at that section of 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 work next where we're going to take the coherent sources and we're going to look at a drawing of these two creating their waves and we're going to look at what is happening between them then we're going to extend that to light we're going to interference patterns and that's where we're going to take it with the next section